Okay, so we talked about likelihood of fires, and the most common is the terminals. Well, let's move into electric shock. This is a big deal to me because I'm involved in a lot of cases of people getting killed, so I have a real passion with this. The National, the National Safety Council estimates that about 300 people in the United States died because of electric shock, 120 to 277 volt circuits. And, and I use those values because we're, we're not talking about high voltage transmission lines. A lot of people get killed in high voltage transmission lines, so we're not getting into that. To my knowledge, and I'll have to find the documentation anybody challenges me on this, um, it's probably been 30 years since I've seen this study, nobody has ever died in a dry location at 30 volts or less. Nobody. So if it's 30 volts or less in a dry location, nobody has ever died. And once you get above 30 volts, now I'm trying to put a perspective, when do we have to worry about electric shock? If you've ever worked on any vehicles or in a boat uh, where you have a little moisture and you got a 12 volt battery, you probably got nailed. Anybody here got nailed on a? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, right? Yeah. And so you're like, Especially what the in the heck? salt water, yeah. You're like, what? You're right, I'm not salt water, but I can imagine it even worse. You're like, what the heck, I just got shocked yeah. on a 12 volt battery? Well, yeah, it's, it doesn't take a lot. And, and I've been involved where, Mar uh, Brian, you and I have done this before, we've gone to swimming pools. And my shock value level is about a half of a bolt. Yeah. If you are gonna be like in a, in, a, in a chlorine swimming pool, so at a half of a bolt, you can, you're not gonna get killed at a half of a bolt, but I can sense that it's uncomfortable. So we're talking about electrical circuits, 120, 277, and these are line to neutral voltage circuits. We're gonna learn what, what does line to neutral mean, or line to ground voltage, we'll talk about that later on. So, all right, here's an example. Person, let's say, there's a fault in the drill. We talked briefly at one time that electrons um, leave the source, they travel out to a load, let's say the drill, and then they return back. But if for some reason there was a fault to this metal drill and somebody was touching that drill, well then the electrons would be leaving the source. They could travel to the person and it's the heart in particular that's the issue. And then touching something that's conductive that brought back to the power supply. And, and this example here, this person is part of the electrical circuit. And there's math here and we can do the math here that we, this is Ohm's law. We haven't even got the Ohm's law yet, but we're talking about Ohm's law. Well, it's just, well, I is the intensity of the circuit by the electromotive force divided by the resistance. We'll talk about later on. And if you dig that number, 120 volt circuit, uh, the human body is 1,000 ohms. It comes out to be 0.12 amperes. Again, whatever that means. Well, let's take put a perspective to that. So basically, in less than a second, a person can become electrocuted, which means you die from electric current when as little as 50 thousandths of an ampere travels through the heart. Now, in reality, that's wrong. It's really when you have 50 millionths of an ampere traveling through the heart. In other words, if you had open heart surgery and you put electric current 50 millionths of an ampere and if anybody wants a data, you get with me and I have to go find it. It's heart. But we're not really having open heart surgery. So therefore, in hospitals and things that happen in that application, well, there's, there's, there's different rules in healthcare facilities than it's going to be on the normal situation. So when I say it really isn't, I say through the heart because I want to talk about the heart. But it, in reality, it's current traveling to the body. So 50 thousands of an ampere, and I, I mean, we could do the math on 50,000 of an ampere, it's probably like a little seven watt light bulb or maybe something less than that. It doesn't take much energy to travel through your body to kill you. So now, what happens is when this current travels through the heart, it, 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 it see the heart has an electrical brain and it, it, it knows open this valve, close, it knows it's all electrical signals and it kind of has a rhythm that it goes through, you know? And it, and it does its own thing. And if you have some kind of strange electrical signal that the body is not aware of, it confuses it. And now the brain is trying to say, well, 
Well, I got confused, so let me see if I can fix this. So now the brain and the heart is not the brain because the brain's not controlling the heart. The electrical signal controlling the heart, it now goes into try to fixing it, and it, it starts, it just, it, it goes like 350 beats a minute. I'm using general concepts. Well, now it's not pumping blood. It, it's just quivering. Okay, so now a person has, they have, they have fibrillation. I, I probably, correct me if I say that word wrong. Fibrillation, is that what the right way? Fibrillation, yeah. Fibrillation. Right. So the heart is fibrillating. So we have to defibrillate it. So what do you do? You take these pads. Brian, we need to show a def Oh, here, right here. Yeah. You take these pads. You set it on there in a certain way, and it does boom. It does an explosion. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to stop the heart. Just stop, okay? Just, just stop because you're going crazy. And then it goes back, and then it resends another signal to start the heart to try to get it back into this normal rhythm. And if you can't get it back to normal rhythm, then it's quivering, and then it's just and it's just gonna go down. Just a quick comment, <clears throat> not to dwell on it, but um, in most cases, people that have died from electric shock, it actually would have been possible for them to be saved had somebody on site been trained in CPR and the use of an AED. And so- Hold on, I don't know an AED. So if you go back to your slide there that you just had up there, that device that's actually on the chest of the mannequin is called an AED. An A, so let's mark this on this graphic here. AED, and tell me, what is AED? Well, what that's an automatic AED. external defibrillator. Yep. AED, I knew that, okay. Yep, and so, and, and it, they're very, very simple to use. This is a little short class that you take from, you know, whomever it is. Um, we were actually on a job site uh, that we, we did a lot of work for a charcoal ma briquette manufacturing facility. Um, it was raining, a reset tripped in a motor control center. The guy was outside in the rain, opened the center, didn't have any protective gear on, fell into the enclosure and got shocked 277 volts. Um, it didn't kill him. It stopped his heart from functioning properly. He tried to go someplace to get somebody to help him and died. They found him in the, found the burn marks and everything to determine what happened, but they found him just laying on the ground. If someone had been there to use the AED and perform CPR, he would have survived. Okay. So it's very important just to mention that while we're looking at that picture and talking about this. Good point. Good point. Thank you. All right. Effects of electricity on the human. So studies have shown this information. Um, Denzel, is that how yep. I say? Yep. A professor at University of Southern California back in probably the 50s, might have been the 60s, probably the 60s. He took his students, and he was working to try to find out, like, well, how much electricity can somebody take? <laughs> so he had a bunch of, I think, like 133 students. I think there was, like, maybe 30 women and whatever number of men in there. And I don't think we have a plot. Okay, yeah. He plotted it. So, okay, 28 women, 138 men. And he plotted this. Well, what did he plot? He said, well, you know what? At what point can you let go? So he sat the guy, the person down. Okay, sit down here. Relax here. Okay, you got that there. Okay, I'm just going to turn it on. And could you do me a favor? Tell me when you notice it. Okay, I can do that. When you notice something, like, okay, I notice something. Okay, um, and that's going to be a value. Let me see. That is called the electrical perception. If you take a look at this graphic right here. Electrical perception. Now, electrical perception, the, the pink is girl, some blues boys, some just a traditional kind of guy. Maybe if you don't like those colors, you can change them in your head and, and what it works for you there. Okay. So the girls are noticing at about 0.6 of a milliampere, which is a milliampere is a thousandth of an ampere. And the boys are noticing it a little bit more than one milliampere. So we go back over to this graphic here. So they're sitting there and say, hey, I, I noticed that. Okay. Well, we got the perception. Okay. Do me a favor. Um, can you tell me when you feel like you were shocked? Okay, like, okay. So the girls are a little bit more than milliampers. I think they were shocked. And the boys live at, you know, almost two milliampers. So go back here, like, yeah, I, I, I think I was shocked. Yeah, that was, okay, I'm, I'm not comfortable. I say, okay, all right, we got that working out. Okay, here's what I'd like you to do next, okay? What I'd like you to do is we're going to keep raising it up, okay? And we're going to raise it up until you feel that you have to let go. So now we're really talking about a competition, okay? I don't know how you guys are, but I want to win, okay? And I want to win big time. So now what they do is they sit there, and I know I'd be sitting back, ready to go. 
I'd be focusing, I'd grab it in there, and I want you to crank it up. So now everybody's in the room, I'm sure, watching this. And so the, let's say the first person goes out there, and then we have this plot here. And this person right here, this guy, he let it go about 10 milliampers. Well, okay, now I got a base. Now, I really don't want to go first, right? Because I want to wait to find out what's going on with the <laughs> other people. And then you see a bunch of people kind of like plot it here. And a whole bunch of people kind of like in the middle are like around 16 milliampers. And then you got this one guy way out there. I'm not sure about him, but that might have been me. But I'm going to try to get down here. So now I can see the guys doing everything they possibly can. Now, this test is this. You have to let it go. Go. Let me make sure that's where they're. Maximum. Oh, no. All right, they just harmless. And this value right here. Maximum let go. See, this means that, okay, you can't let go after this value. So the, the test here is, okay, you got to be able to take it, but the only way you can win is of what? I can let it go before oh. you turn it off. And you're watching my body language to find, okay, we better turn this off, okay? So now you have this competition. Now, if you take a look at the ladies, which, of course, are always smarter than guys, they're like, yeah, no, um, no, I don't think we're going to be kind of going that far in that kind of game. So I'm not sure if this is a gender thing. But then again, studies have also showed that these values that were plotted had to do with the mass of the individual, not the gender. Because the 28 women in this class weighed a lot less on a collective average than the men did or the young men in this in program here. So it, it, it doesn't look like, so when you see things talking about women and men, if you actually get into the studies, you realize it really has to do with weight. And I think it came out to be... One milliamp per 10 pounds of body exactly. weight, roughly, yeah. yeah. One milliamp per 10. So yeah. a, a 100 pound person would be about 10 milliampers yeah, so. that they couldn't let go. A 200 pound person would be about 20 milliampers. So back so on here. your chart, you got one big boy all the way over there to the right yeah. on, on the other chart. <laughs> Oh, 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 so, the, so the larger, the larger the person, the mass, right? The larger yeah. the mass, the more current it takes, no, no, or no. less. No, no, words, it's more. it's one milliampere per ten pounds. Yeah, so Let more. Let go threshold. Okay. So a child who's fifty pounds, they're not going to be able to let go. Using an analogy here, mm -hmm. more than five milliamperes. A, an elderly person who's frail, and of course, there's other factors, but weight is what was determined. It wasn't men and women that, well, if it was men and women, because they're smarter, so they would have let go sooner. I mean, my mm -hmm. daughter, Belinda, and I love her, but Belinda, my daughter, would be screaming and yelling and we're like, we haven't turned it on yet. You know what I mean? <laughs> She's already, I felt it. No, you turned it on. They know. No, no, Belinda would have been like, you want me to sit there and let you shock me? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> she would have never been in that. But if she forced to, she goes, okay, okay I feel it, goodbye. <laughs> in other words, so women are just smarter. So, But uh, there is, I'm sure, something to do with the personalities, something to do with mass. The key is this. There is a value that we use that we, is that, over 16 milliampers for a male and over 11 milliamps for, me, for a female is above the level of let go. I mean, if you can't let go, you're not gonna go to the bathroom, you're not gonna go back on your phone, I mean, you're going to die. So remember, I said 50 milliampers, which is over here, fibrillation level. Okay, now you're getting into with a heart. Again, if you're actually in open heart surgery, it's gonna be 50 millions of an ampere, but if you're going through your bodies and using, oh, the hands, whatever the case may be.